Hi friends, welcome to the Secrets of Witch podcast with me, Sabrina Scott. Hello, hello. Nice to have you here listening. I appreciate you. On this podcast, I talk all about life, love, healing, spirituality, witchcraft, magic, tarot, mediumship, feminine energy, and everything in between. Basically, my secrets for living a good life and transforming crap into gold. Basically, that is why this podcast is called Secrets of a Witch. It's stuff I've learned along the way on this crazy, tumultuous journey of healing, of magic, and more. So before I get into today's topic, I wanted to just do a little shout out to my clothing company. (laughs) So as we are going into the fall, autumn months here in Toronto, it's a little bit chillier. I find myself reaching for hoodies and sweaters a lot more often than I was just a week ago. So I just wanted to remind everyone that I do actually have some of my own hoodies and sweaters out in the world that you can buy at shopsabrinamscott.com. And they're so cute. So I'll talk a little bit about what I've got. Uh, Obviously, you can go creep and look and see if there's anything that you like. But some of my favorite designs say Empress. Some of them say Abundance Mindset. I've also got a hoodie that says a witch who can't curse, can't cure. The first page of my newest prose book, Curse and Cure, Magic for Real Life. And it's interesting because I've really tried to make everything as size inclusive as I can. Obviously, not all size, not all the styles are in all sizes, but there is definitely something available in everyone's size. So the diversity of sizing goes from extra small to 5X. And so there will be at least one hoodie or one sweater that you will be able to grab no matter what your size is. So I just want to throw that out there. I have also, I think my favorite hoodie is actually, my favorite hoodie that I've got for sale right now is the black hoodie with the curse and cure illustration on it. I think it looks so good in black with the white like tie things that come out of the hoodie. I don't know what it's called, like the little strings um, that goes through the hood. I don't know what that's called. I'm sure there's a technical term for that. But that honestly, I've been wearing a lot of black Lululemon tights lately, and I feel like that hoodie just goes so well personally. Since that's a unisex sizing, I wear an extra small, even though in most women's sizing, I usually wear like a medium. So there is a lot of sizing information on every item on the website. There is photos of me wearing everything. I personally, I find it so annoying when people make clothing and they don't even bother to purchase it themselves and try it on and make sure that it fits good and it looks good and the quality is good. Like personally, I never buy anything from a creator who it's clear they didn't take their own photos of their own product. And so I didn't want to be that person. So there was a lot of samples that I ordered that was not good enough. And so you will not see that on the website because it was not up to snuff for me in terms of the quality. So everything that's on there, I wear, I stand by it. So check it out. I also note on every item which size I'm wearing. So go take a look and grab something to keep you warm and cozy as we go into cozy season. Okay, that is my advertisement. Shop SabrinaMScott.com. Check it out. I'm new to doing advertisements. It makes me slightly uncomfortable, but I think it's kind of important. And personally, I love the clothing. And so I think you will too. So thank you for listening to my little ad. Anyway, moving on. So today's episode is a little bit inspired by the last one, but I wanted to talk specifically about honesty and the importance of saying the things that we're afraid to say. And so I don't know about you guys, but in this current political climate, there's definitely been a lot of things I've been afraid to say 
And in the Instagram post I made a few days ago, you can probably see it's like a close up of my lips. It's a little bit about my gender story and how I feel about everything going on right now. And I was correct to feel like afraid to talk about that and afraid to post that because I did get some people being very mean to me, um, one of which posted a bunch of bullshit slanderous crap that some of it was just rude and mean and just like vitriolic. And then other things that this person posted like was just flat out lies, lies upon lies upon lies uh, to make this person seem like a victim and me seem like an asshole. It's just fucked up. And so not to air out that laundry, but the reason I bring this up is that if you're afraid to say anything, if you're afraid to share a political opinion, if you're afraid to share like a belief about something, an opinion about something that goes against you know, the normal opinion right now or the common like social justice left opinion is at least my context anyway. Like if you're afraid to go against that or if you've got a slightly more nuanced or slightly more expanded perspective, it is real life right now that people will come for you. You know, it is a fact. (laughs) You know, it is. It's happened for me every time I've shared a controversial opinion or a belief or an experience that goes a little bit against the norm in society right now, right? Like right now it's kind of like a one track opinion. That's the only opinion you're allowed to have that's praised as like the good opinion. And if you don't have the good opinion, then get ready to get, you know, in trouble on the internet or excommunicated from this or that. And so I get it, you know, people totally have reason to fear being honest right now about certain things. Because we're moving into this era, and I'm planning on writing something about this, this era of good opinions and bad opinions, of good identities and bad identities, and we're in an era where if you have certain identities, people tell you that your opinion doesn't matter. And if you have certain identities, you're not allowed to have an opinion. So identity has become a stand-in for actually explaining your point and like explaining why you think something you know like identity has become a stand-in for thoughtful rhetoric and intelligent persuasion and so we're in this very kind of like I don't know like tribalistic medieval and I don't know maybe there's a medieval scholar listening to this that's like no it's not quite like that and like please if that's the case just like send me an email I want to learn like tell me if that metaphor makes no sense but I feel like we're in this era of people being kind of like tarred and feathered like if not literally then online or you know people are in this era of like public shaming and cancel culture and you know people who might know you in person, people who you might be genuine friends with, people who you might have known for years in community, even if you only met them once or twice, will like literally go off on you. And they'll do that in order to distance themselves from you, to make themselves feel like good, to make themselves look good, to make themselves look moral, to make you look shitty. And it's all very black and white and it's all very performative and it's all very weird. And this is what happens when people can't be honest without being afraid of this very real consequence. And it makes me very sad because I feel like it doesn't have to be this way. You know, I feel like there's other ways to be together in community. I feel like there's other ways to engage with each other socially. And back when I started thinking about this stuff back in like 2020, where I was getting a lot of online hate because of something that happened and it's kind of happened, it pops off every now and then. It's not so bad anymore. So I think everyone who's going to behave that way kind of slowly saw themselves out over the span of a few years, like good riddance, goodbye, like don't let the door hit your butt as you, as you depart. But, um, it's been really interesting to me to see this, right? Like the ways that people find it appropriate to engage with each other, you know? And I think, one of the things I've had to really spend some time thinking about over the past few years is what are my requirements for people that I'm going to be in relationship with? What are the requirements that I have for the people that I'm going to be in community with? And one of the things that I came up with was curiosity. 
right? And so one of my personal rules about engaging around this like very contentious, spicy stuff where a lot of people get very heated and, you know, I've lost clients for talking about some of this stuff and like, that's fine. Like, whatever, it's all good. Um, one of my biggest points for this, my, one of the things I look for, it's kind of mandatory for me is, is this person coming at me with curiosity? Is this person asking me questions about why I feel the way I feel? Or is this person coming at me with accusations, statements, declarations, etc.? And you guys can do this. Like, look at any post, like, of anyone's social media that went viral or, like, is spicy. Like, where someone wrote something maybe controversial that, like, not everyone agrees with, you know? Like, you can... It's not so bad on my most recent post about this, the one, like, close-up of my lips where I talk about my gender journey and how I feel about the medicalization of children right now. Um, It's an unpopular opinion at the moment to say what I said. But you'll notice that I did receive a little bit of pushback. Like, thankfully, not that much, which, like, yay, touch wood. I'm superstitious about that. But um, you'll notice that people are not asking me questions. It's so interesting. Like, they're not acknowledging my experience. They're not having compassion for me. They're not saying, I'm sorry that happened to you. I understand why you feel the way you do. They're not saying any of that. They're just coming at me with personal attacks and declarative statements and accusations. And what I kind of came to terms with after some reflection a few years ago when this first started happening was that I really don't care to be in community or conversation with anyone who sees it fit to engage with me or any other person in that way, right? So my stance is like, disagree with me all you want, but at least be curious, like ask me something so we can have a conversation. I can ask you some stuff and we can go back and forth and try to understand each other if we don't already, right? But that's often not how people engage. It's this very combative, it's accusations. It's all just sentences ending in periods, no sentences ending in question marks. And so for me, that was always a telltale sign of like, okay, this person does not actually want to understand. This person doesn't want to have a conversation. This person wants to have a monologue and try to beat me down. And so that has become the biggest way for me to decide if that person is worth my time or if I want to be in community, in conversation with such an individual. And so we all get to decide what kinds of people we want to surround ourselves with, right? Like what conversations we want to participate in, which conversations we don't want to participate in. And for me, that's a big one. That's probably the biggest one is curiosity. Are you going to come at me thinking you already know everything about me and everything about what I'm going to say? Or are you going to come at me curious, open to the idea that we could learn something from one another, right? It's very interesting. And going back to the topic of honesty, like I think that it's just important to be able to be honest with the people in our lives and know that they'll be able to hold space for that, right? Even if it's spicy, even if it's controversial, even if it's contentious, like even if it's like a challenging topic where people might be very activated, have very heated relationships to the subject matter at hand, like I totally get that. And I think it's important to be able to sit with that discomfort if it arises, hear each other out, ask each other questions about this stuff, right? Like I remember um, a few months ago, I was sitting outside at a coffee shop just chatting and like it's a coffee shop. It's just like me and a bunch of older folks, really. Like (laughs) there's no young people there, really. And so I've just started randomly chatting with some of the regulars and I don't remember how this came up, but there was someone who I suppose had an, ad- like an addictions past and I don't know how that came up. It was a really vulnerable share on this person's part. So I was very grateful to be trusted with that information. This is obviously uh, not an easy thing for everyone to talk about. And so the person told me a little bit about their journey and I don't know if you guys know that I feel how I feel about uh, this, but I am really against 
safe injection sites and I'm really against it. Uh, I'm not into it. I'm not into the homeless encampments all over my city. I'm not into that. Uh, for me, that is not uh, harm reduction. I, I could go off on a whole tangent about what do I feel about that topic. Um, I'm sure some of which would get me canceled or people would try to cancel me. I don't really care at this point. But instead of me talking to this person of like, oh, blah, 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 saying something ridiculous, I was like, oh, you know what? Like with your life experience, what's your opinion about safe injection sites? You know, I did not go into a, a monologue. I did not do this. I did not do that. I didn't shame or judge or anything. I w- it was just more a conversation where we asked each other questions, you know, about each of our different viewpoints. And what was really interesting is like, we actually had the same viewpoint, which I didn't quite expect, but it was really cool to learn from a conversation with this person, like the nuance of it. Right. And so even though this person agreed with my stance on it, they had more reasons for just like for agreeing with me than I had, you know, like they had more reasons from the inside of why they think it's bad than I did as someone on the outside for thinking it's bad. So that was pretty interesting. But I never would have known that if I didn't come to that conversation with curiosity and honesty to open up and be like, yeah, this is how I feel about this. And this was older person. So obviously older people, not all, but a lot of older folks are a little bit more measured in their ability to have slow, thoughtful conversations as opposed to a lot of the young generation right now uh, like the Gen Z people who oftentimes, and like my heart goes out to y'all, like I know it's not easy to be a kid right now, but there's this sense of immediacy and urgency. And I'm sure I felt that too when I was that age, you know, like where it's like black and white and, you know, we have to all make up our minds on this immediately and it's you're either this or you're that. And there's this immediacy to be right, immediacy to perform something. And so like, what I really appreciate about this conversation was both coming at it honestly, sincerely, with curiosity. And, you know, that conversation with a different individual could have gone like really dramatically, you know. Um, so I think we both knew it was like a safe conversation to have with one another, which I think is really cool. But my point here is just about that's how you have a conversation about something, rather than how it often happens on the internet where people are just making these declarative statements and you're this, you're that, I'm gonna, you know, and it's just really not conducive, I don't think, to healthy connections or healthy relationships. But that's just my opinion. (laughs) And so if you are someone who feels afraid to talk to anyone in your life, like honestly, about what your political views are, about how you feel about this or that, I don't know. Like, I just think it is important to be able to be honest with the people in our lives and to be able to sit with that discomfort and to have hopefulness that people who care about you will be able to weather those relationships and sit with any disagreements and still be able to coexist in a peaceful way because people change over time. Like, people's ideas change over time. And I just think it's important to be able to live life honestly even if it's if it makes you unpopular or if it is alienating to some people or whatever, I just don't believe that anyone should stifle themselves about who they are, what they feel, what they think. If we're going to talk about spiritually, that's going to lead to a blocked throat chakra, which could also lead to throat issues. Um, I remember back when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I would sometimes go for dinner or drinks with a family member that I had a lot to say to, um, but it was stuff I was afraid to say. Calling them out about this or that, they hurt me doing this, they hurt me doing that. Um, And I very rarely got the courage to say what I needed to say. And interestingly, nine out of ten times after I saw that family member during this span of years of my life, I got strep throat every single time. Did they have strep throat? Nope. And so we can talk about like the science of that, who knows, Uh, but I do think there's something to be said for noticing the spiritual blockages, the physical ailments that can sometimes come from those 
emotional blockages, right? Like blocking our speech, blocking our expression, blocking our communication. What does that do to our body? How does that live inside us and block us and mess us up spiritually? And then how does that impact our health negatively? Right? I know this probably sounds a little bit hippy dippy, but I think there is some science behind this. Not that there needs to be science behind everything. I think the science is always going to lag a little bit. But I think it's very interesting and very true that it is important to allow ourselves to express, right? To work stuff out and to be able to face our fears and be honest with the people that are close to us. With random strangers on the internet, honestly, who gives a shit, like, whatever if you make those people mad and even if people close to you are mad because you feel what you feel it's okay I would personally say it's important that we express ourselves that we embrace honesty with ourselves the very least as a first step even if it's tough so I'm going to leave you guys with that the importance of honesty is that we remain a clear channel for the beauty of our life, a clear vessel for the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, all of that. Very, very important. So be honest, my friends, even if it's tough, and especially when it's tough. Okay, friends, this has been the Sabrina Scott podcast. (laughs) Actually, it's not called that. Secrets of a Witch (laughs) is what it's actually called. Though when I was making this podcast, I was like, should it be called the Sabrina Scott Show or should it just be called Secrets of a Witch? I don't know. Who knows? Right now it's Secrets of a Witch. Anyway, it might as well be the Sabrina Scott Show since I don't interview anybody. Thank you so much for listening. You can say hello to me on the internet. My Instagram is Sabrina M. Scott. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott. And you can send me an email, ceo at sabrinamscott.com if you want to book a session with me about anything at all. More than happy to help you on your journey wherever you're at and whatever you need, whether that is coaching around energy and vibes, whether that is deprogramming from the wokeness that is uh, infecting people (laughs) and blocking people's energy in a weird way, but that's another episode of the show. Uh, or whether you want a tarot reading or a spiritual consultation or mentorship around spirituality and magic, I got you. Reach out, CEO at sabrinamscott.com. Of course, buy one of my hoodies to keep you cozy as we move into the fall season. Shop sabrinamscott.com. Check it out. And I will catch you guys on the flip side. Take care. Bye.